लगा लीजिए आप इसमें ऑडियो भी है क्या हाँ चलिए लगा लीजिए लगा लीजिए ठीक ओके चलिए आप कौन है Good afternoon. Welcome to the TOS session at this convention uh, of the 144th Convention of the Theosophical Society. Um, our first speaker this afternoon is Susan Bayless. Uh, having joined the Society in 1982, Susan has been an active member of the TOS since 1983. She has undertaken numerous roles for the Theosophical Society in England, and currently she is national secretary and a trustee and director for the charity. Susan is also editor and designer producer for the English section's Esoterica magazine and continues to study and teach theosophy. She has been a national speaker for many years regularly contributing to annual summer schools, other regional events in England and Wales, and at London headquarters. In 2014, she delivered the prestigious Blavatsky Lecture. And she will be talking to us about Seeds of Thought, the Bond of Unity. Okay, I don't know how well you can um, see the screen, but hopefully it will come across to you. So it's a very great pleasure to be with you this afternoon and to be sharing with you um, thoughts and messages from the, the TOS. So when contemplating the elements of nature, we are aware of something other something beyond ourselves. The inherent vibrations of earth, air, fire, and water. These tremendous forces of nature are often all too evident when we experience tsunami, earthquakes, fire, etc. Then we become all too aware of them. But there are many other forces of nature which are not so evident. They can be very subtle and especially be hidden from our everyday vision. Like the waves of the ocean, we exist in a sea of thought. But how many of us actually stop to consider the reality of this statement? But every minute of every day, we are living and breathing and experiencing literally within a sea of thought, of thought vibration, of thought color, and of thought shape. And many of you may have been to see the exhibition of thought forms 
and those, those illustrations depict what has been captured in the um, vision of the viewer, specific shapes and colours that they have seen. So we all experience our everyday wandering mind. You're sitting here listening to me. You're sitting at home having coffee. You're sitting in some nice space and you're watching the clouds. But all the time your mind is flitting from one thing to another. And behind you are examples. You may be thinking of your children. You may be thinking of work you have to do at the office. You may be thinking about your holiday. You may be thinking about any one of a thousand and one things. And this is what our everyday mind does. It flits from one thing to another. Now this shows something of Curlian photography which is able to produce something that gives us some idea, something for us to see, that shows what is going on in our auras. Now this is only a very partial and fleeting depiction, but it's there just to give you some idea of the vibration and color that is within our aura and changing second by second as our thoughts and feelings and the contents of our mind change. So when we have a new baby in our family, we will all recognize the feeling of great joy and great love that we have in welcoming that new child into the world. And we exude a huge amount of love. And those with eyes to see can see that the child and the parents, they are surrounded by the love from the hearts of those who are welcoming them. It's a very real thing. And the child and the parents benefit from the love that is given. So the family is for that time, for the first few months, living within a sea of loving energy that is coming from the family and friends. Now, thoughts and feelings and shapes and colors that emanate from them are as fast as the wind, faster than lightning. They are never still. And one afternoon, I had gone to see my friend, and I happened to be sitting with my back to the door, and my friend was sitting opposite, and she could see out of the window. And I heard that someone had left the home. And I saw come from her a stream of energy, like a flash flood of energy straight from her to the person who I, I couldn't see was hidden from my view, surrounding them with love and joy and the most tremendous feelings of joyfulness. And I only understood what had happened a few moments later when she said that it was her fiance who had left the building and she'd got engaged the previous evening. And this is to illustrate to you the spontaneous element, the spontaneous nature of our thoughts and feelings. That when we feel that burst of energy, it is doing something. Now by contrast, we have here a, a sort of illustration of what happens when angry thoughts are sent to someone. And you will see the black arrows and the red energy. Those black arrows are penetrating the person's aura. And whether they are conscious of it or not at the time, it is painful. 
So thoughts are things, they are very definite things. And we need to take care of our thoughts and to be aware that whatever we think and feel, it's going out into the world with more or less direction, depending upon the energy behind it. So if we are sitting, contemplating the beauty of the flowers, our thoughts are very mild. But if we are worked up about something and we're not happy about something, our thoughts can become very concentrated. And that is when thoughts become energized and they can fly from us to the object of our thoughts. So there is need to be very mindful of what we are doing with our thoughts and feelings and to take care. Why the hell not? There's so much to live for. Yeah, like what? Are you religious or an atheist? Religious. Me too. Are you Christian or Buddhist? Christian. Me too. Are you Catholic or Protestant? I'm uh, a Protestant. Me too. Are you Episcopalian or Baptist? I'm, I'm Baptist. Hallelujah, me too. Are you Baptist Church of God or Baptist Church of the Lord? Baptist Church of God. Me too! Are you Original Baptist Church of God or are you Reformed Baptist Church of God? Reformed Baptist Church of God. Me too! Are you Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1879 or Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1915? Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation 1915! Oh. Die, you heretic scum! So we will all recognize those kind of thoughts in ourselves and in other people. We like to stick to what we know. We may disapprove of someone else's thoughts or beliefs, but this is what we end up with by condemning others when we expect ourselves to be accommodated and to be appreciated, because there really is no difference each human being is as equal and as valuable as any other. So we are all subject to human frailties and selfish temptations. Social conditioning can be at odds with spiritual, moral and philosophical teachings. People can be suspicious of other cultural or social values, other faiths, beliefs, and practices. We can be protective of our own communities at the expense of others. Everywhere in the world we can observe inequalities and difficulties, but we also know that there is a lot of generosity and goodness in the world. And our thoughts and feelings of the world are very much coloured by where our attention is, so that if we focus on the ills of the world, then our mind and emotions become full of those things and we become troubled. On the other hand, if we recognize that those things are happening, but they are happening within the midst of goodness and heartfulness, then we need not be so depressed and brought down by the problems. And we know that by centering our thoughts and minds and our hearts on positive things, that we can help to lift the dark vibrations that are in the world. This is the dual nature of the human condition. Our lower self, the lower mind and emotions is what stands in the way of our spiritual progress. 
all of our accumulated tendencies have to overcome, have to be overcome. This is the key to all spiritual disciplines of whatever school or of whatever faith. We have to overcome the dweller on the threshold. The dweller on the threshold is our personal self, which we allow to stand in the way of our spiritual progress. We have to learn to move beyond the confines of our personal mind and emotions to raise our state of consciousness to a higher level. This is the route to a spiritual path. The lotus is a universal symbol. It's found all over the world. It reflects the human condition and the divine seed that we are. Even before it germinates and unfolds into a state of active growth, the lotus contains within itself the perfectly formed leaves, a reflection in miniature of the perfectly formed plant it will one day become. It has the roots of its physical vehicle planted in the earth. Its opened leaves are reaching above the water, looking beyond the field. Symbolically, this depicts a looking beyond the lower mind and emotions. And its flower head is reaching towards the spiritual sun and opening up to unite with the rays of the sun, the oneness of all. Using the power of the mind through love and inspiration, thought, desire and action, we can transform our state of consciousness. The lower quaternary, the square at the bottom of the screen, represents our lower selves. The higher triad represents our spiritual nature, our soul, and our higher vehicles. This is but reflected darkly into our low selves. But by working on our spiritual development, we build a bridge, and that bridge is the Antikarana. Over time, that bridge strengthens and broadens and it becomes easier for our higher qualities to manifest in our lower selves and we become different, we become more spiritualized. And when it is stronger, it becomes what is called in the West the rainbow bridge to wisdom. And this allows our soul and our higher nature to cross over, to manifest more strongly into our everyday selves. And it reflects the best of us. And this is the state at the, um, after many, many incarnations that the Mahatmas, the Buddhas, the um, very well-developed people have reached and that bridge disappears because they have become the higher. But most of us, we, me, I'm not at that stage. So we have to work on our self-development to build this link with the higher in order that we can move towards becoming it. Just as any seed, we too possess the potential to develop into a noble being and realize what we truly are. And here we have the young soul, the baby, held within the eagle. And the eagle depicts clear sight. It flies high. It has acute vision. And you can see for me that that is a very apt symbol of 
the best in ourselves, our spiritual nature, which we can learn to manifest in the material world. So our physical body is our boat on the sea of life when we are anchored once again onto this earthly plane. We must learn to know and understand through the spiritualization of consciousness. In his divine poems, Father Qualls observed, knowledge, when wisdom is too weak to guide her, is like a headstrong horse which throws the rider, which made that great philosopher a vow. He knows so much that he did nothing know. And Virgil in the Aeneid said, the gates of hell are open night and day, smooth the descent and easy is the way, but to return and view the cheerful skies, in this task the mighty labor lies. So whatever allegory appeals to you, to me or to anyone individually, we all have to let go of our animal nature and learn to see with a clearer vision. As Clara Codd said, the problem of the individual is a problem of the world. And in solving his own mystery, and in solving his own mystery, man solves the mystery of the universe, which is the field of our growth and evolution. Mahatma Kutumi told us, every step which is made by one of us in their direction will force them to make one step towards us. And from the words of Mabel Collins, I am ready without complaint to be cast down from the place in which I stand should I swerve or flinch under any trial falling on those next to me. For I know that my strength can never be exhausted since my comrades also stand unswervingly by my side. And well united, we cannot fail. So we know that there is only one life and in all our diversity of form, we are a universal brotherhood, united in service to each other, as illustrated in this video. Thank you, Susan. There's some very interesting images for us to think about. Being stars, being flowers, being seeds, understanding who we are. Uh, next, uh, S.U. Mahesh is our next speaker. He is from Bangalore and has been an active member and worker for the Theosophical Society and the Theosophical Order of Service for many years as he was born into a Theosophical family. He followed the lead of his father, Umakanth Rao. I'm sure some, many of you know him. In both a life of dedication to the TS and as in his profession as a chartered accountant. Mahesh is instru was instrumental on the organi organi organizing team of the T International TS Youth Convention, um, one just finished a few days ago, 
at uh, Adyar, and we had the first one last year. And he also is a, one of the volunteers from Bangalore who fed us at the convention in Adyar for the last two years. And Mahesh told me the title of his talk, which I forgot. So, Mahesh, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I'll keep my talk short so that uh, in case I'm not being relevant, you're assured that it's going to end soon. Uh, most of us, I think all of us would have heard stories during our childhood. And later on in school, due to academic uh, compulsions, you would have had, read some more books. But many of us have interest in reading stories, you would have continued with that. One of the stories I read, I mean I heard when I was a child, was in this uh, Ramayana. Ramayana and Mahabharata are two very important uh, stories that are told to children in India. Whether we believe it is real or mythological, it is a personal uh, uh, perception. Uh, there was one story, I mean there are so many subtopics in that uh, big epic. Uh, one of them was uh, when uh, Sri Rama had to cross the ocean from India to Lanka to save his wife Sita from the grip of this evil king uh, Ravan. So when the monkeys were uh, throwing those huge boulders with Sri Rama's name into the sea, uh, it's to build the bridge. After some time, uh, Rama thought, I'll just sit by somewhere for some time till the whole thing is ready, then come back. So he finds a small boulder there. He goes and sits there, keeps his bow to the side. He has an arrow in his hand, so he just pierces it to the ground. And after some time, probably contemplating or thinking what to do next, he decides to go back and see what, what, what work is going on. So picks up his bow, then takes out the arrow from the ground. And then he observes that there's a stain of blood on the head of this arrow. He is very surprised because he's been trained as a soldier. So they are supposed to keep their weapons neat and clean every time they use it and when they want to use it next. So he tries to recollect, when was the last time I used this and that, how is it that I have not uh, cleaned it and kept it back? And somehow he's not able to recall any incident where he had used it and he had not uh, cleaned it. Uh, then uh, coincidentally what he does, he just turns around and sees where he had pierced the arrow on the earth, on the ground. And there he finds a frog. And this arrow would have gone pierced through the leg of that frog. And then he asked this frog, why is it that you didn't shout in pain when I pierced this arrow into the ground? Then the frog says, all my life, whenever was there was a challenge, whenever I face difficulties, I used to always call out Sri Rama. And then I used to face it. And I was quite successful in that. I could overcome any difficulties. But now, when your own arrow has pierced me, whom do I call out? So this is, I mean, one of the paradoxes in life that we face at times. Being a TOS member, I think it has some relevance to what we do. The other incident that happened about a couple of days, of course, this was a story probably, but something happened about two days ago. Uh, you know, the, you must, all, of, all of you must have 
crossed over that chill that is that uh, all of us are going through in this place it's so cold and uh, doing any kind of work has become difficult so i am in a room i am put up in a room where are there are 38 other people in the dormitory and they are all from assam uh, i am from bangalore so according to the demographic uh, statistics or uh, science in india every 12 and a half kilometer the demography changes it seems in india every 12.75 or something like that the demographic demography changes so these people are from assam and i have no clue what language they speak what are they talking whether it is about my presence i am the only person there and the rest of them are from one particular uh, state so i have absolutely no clue and the weather being so cold it's look it looks like i'm left out out of that big group and I, so everything was a little bit difficult the water was cold the bed was cold um, then all this and uh, day for Saturday morning around 6 a.m uh, one of the ladies there uh, i think she was praying and when she was praying she started singing a song of course i don't understand the language but uh, with so much devotion i don't understand the language but whatever she said probably was a devotional song but when she said it so beautifully i uh, with so much devotion that i just forgot that it was so cold here there is absolute i didn't feel the cold i didn't feel the isolation i didn't feel anything and then I, i realized see these are the small things i mean we expect so many high we have such high expectations from so many things but such simple things as a story or a song would distract people from their daily routine in the tos work when any calamity befalls there's so many people saying that we have to collect so much money we have to do so much work we have to spend so much we have to buy so many materials but a story or a song for a person who is in difficulty might be more beneficial than the material uh, benefits that we give them so when nancy sent an email to me uh, why don't you speak at the convention for the tos i started searching what what subject do i choose i am not used to being on a desk so this was a little difficult for me so i started searching what subject to you to adopt how to prepare for that coincidentally one of those days i read a quote from mother teresa in that quote in that quote there was a phrase be an example that's what it was quite catching because having been in the tos for some time this was definitely an uh, interesting uh, phrase but then be an example how do i understand that how do i relate my talk to this phrase so i just went about trying to go back into the life history of some of those people who are related to ts so including mother teresa of course anne besant and blavatsky one thing i found among these three people anne besant blavatsky or mother teresa that they were born in a western society where materially everything was up to a standard there could not be there is uh, there is a standard and there could not be any speculation or uh, deviation from this anything would be much better not but not lower so when these people decided or thought that going to india was the purpose of uh, life i didn't realize i didn't understand what it meant because if you come to india as a tourist only as a tourist a tourist would most interest would be be a good road 
a good accommodation, good food. But somebody from the West comes to India, it's probably much beyond that. What did they see that many of us, even after having studied their life history, their work, their humanitarian and spiritual uh, progress, are still trying to grasp? We are trying to raise ourselves to that higher level that would give us the confidence that we are in the right direction and doing the right things. Mother Teresa cared for people, people who su suffered from certain incurable diseases at that time. She cared for people who had become outcast in their own community and their own families had refused to accept them. Annie Besant spoke about home rule or self-governance, asking people to be free from a mindset of this master and servant concept. She promoted education, equal rights, without any form of discrimination. And then there was Blavatsky, who said the only purpose for humanity was spiritual progress. In At the Feet of the Master by J. Krishnamurti, the first qualification that he mentions is discrimination. Discrimination not in comparison to material aspects like race or religion or caste, but more importantly in the direction that we have to take, the path that we have to choose. It is, this, it is probably this ability to see what is more important to do, the ability to foresee what fruits would bear in a, if a certain path was chosen, that has made their life and work. They must have also had options before them, not very different from what we have today in front of us. Choices that, that sounded very good, lucrative, choices that would have brought them more recognition for their for having achieved measurable and visible objectives. But their thoughts, their vision for humanity was beyond such petty things. It was their ability to discriminate from efforts for immediate benefits to working on objectives that would bring greatest good for greatest numbers. That we remember them even today for that. It is their words and actions which motivate us to make the right choice. The theme of this convention is nurturing the divine seed. Philosophically speaking, we may be those seeds, those divine seeds, the founders of the Theosophical Society created and nurtured this fertile space called the Theosophical Movement. And we have had the opportunity to germinate and bloom and we have to pass on what we have received without being selfish and keeping the benefits to ourselves. We have taken it upon us ourselves to sow those seeds of divinity that will generate and bloom at a future point of time. It is important that we make the right choices now so that in the long term that benefit reaches to all of humanity. What are those qualities that we have to imbibe that would make our thoughts and actions more relevant? What are those qualities that are within us that is detrimental to our own progress that we have to let go? Many of the speakers during our convention have been referring to the Noble Eightfold Path. And there have been so many references to many of the texts of the Theosophical Movement. Probably if you can keep focused on these subjects, these values, our work for the TS and the TOS, I'm sure, will come and continue in the future. Thank you.
It gives me very great pleasure to welcome Nancy Seacrest this afternoon. Nancy, as you may know, serves as the International Secretary for the Theosophical Order of Service. She began studying metaphysics and comparative religion in childhood, encountering theosophy in her early 20s, and she joined the Theosophical Society in 1980. Nancy lived and worked at the Cotone Theosophical Institute in the USA from 1987 to 88. She served as National Secretary of the Theosophical Society in America from 1988 through to 1990. A certified public accountant by profession, Nancy subsequently served as National Treasurer for the Theosophical Society in America for some 18 years. Nancy currently holds the position of International Treasurer of the Theosophical Society. Nancy became the International Secretary of the Theosophical Society, Theosophical Order of Service in December 2014. Since then, she has traveled in the USA, Europe and Asia, giving presentations, talks and workshops on the TOS work around the world and related theosophical topics. Her articles and some of her talks have been published, published in The Theosophist and other theosophical publications. Nancy, of course, is a great deal more than the sum of those parts. And I welcome Nancy. Thank you, Susan. Waiting for the technical stuff. There we go. Okay. At times, people have asked me, how do I get started in service work? What should I do? I tell them, grow where you are planted. By that I mean, look at where you are and start there. Gardens grow by planting seeds. Seeds that grow into tall, strong trees with many leaves. Seeds that twist and turn, growing into vines that reach diverse places farther and farther away. Seeds that grow fruits and vegetables that nourish us and seeds that grow flowers to supply us with beauty. Working in the TOS, whoops. Jeez. Okay. Working in the TOS is like this. We start small. We plant seeds, and depending on the type of seed we have planted, we serve our families, our communities, our nations, or even the world. Well, we focus on humanitarian activities, service given with a consciousness of the divine within, and a purity of heart, also plants seeds of divinity. Before we do anything else, we must be tending to our own garden, our own self-unfoldment, as HPB called it, so that we are coming from a position of positive attention, intention, and purity of heart. This is not to say that we should wait until we have attained anything close to perfection 
before we even attempt to help others. No, it just means that we need a degree of awareness and are working towards self-transformation. We also need to look at what skills we might have to offer. Group of students studying social work. Krishnamurti said, it is the happy man, not the idealist or the miserable escapee who is revolutionary and the happy man is not he who has many possessions. The happy man is the truly religious man and his very living is social work. But if you become merely one of the innumerable social workers, your heart will be empty. You may give away your money or persuade other people to contribute theirs, and you may bring about marvelous reforms. But as long as your heart is empty and your mind full of theories, your life will be dull, weary, without joy. So first, understand yourself. And out of that self-knowledge will come action of the right kind. Members of the TOS are not professional social workers, of course. But we do work for social causes. Therefore, I feel that Krishnamurti's words can apply to us as well. The ways in which we serve, like the TOS, has several outreach avenues. David Stein of TOS Canada edits our TOS In Touch online e-newsletter. The e-newsletter, published quarterly, gives us the opportunity to keep our members and friends informed about the latest happenings in the international TOS and projects and programs in the various TOS countries. We also publish articles on issues relating to service written by TOS members and others. Our webmaster is Rosie Ulix. A new website is pending and we continue to increase the activity on our TOS International Facebook page. Our following is growing. All of these outreach efforts further contact with our members and friends. We are also currently working with a general council committee for applied theosophy to find greater opportunities for service and to increase awareness of the TS and the TOS to the general public. At the international level, some of our TOS groups worldwide collected and or donated money to help with flood relief efforts in India again this year. Many also helped with recovery efforts in Bhubaneswar, India after Cyclone Fanny hit there. These efforts were particularly close to home as damage was sustained at some of our own TOS projects. Hands-on efforts by TOS members were of course prevalent there. Each year, This year, annual reports were received from 27 of our 36 countries. The projects highlighted in the reports are sometimes different in their approaches, but center around similar topics 
that the international TOS has been encouraging. Women's issues, theosophical or other education, and youth involvement, specifically right now. Okay. Most countries are also active in animal welfare and supplying humanitarian assistance at both group and individual levels. Almost all countries, even if they do nothing else, have healing groups and some practice peace meditation on a regular basis. Each year, the, my report to the president highlights four or five countries. This year, they are England, Finland, India, Italy, and Pakistan. The TOS in England concentrates mainly on raising funds, which are then donated to TL, TOS and TS projects in Ajar, the Philippines, and Kenya, and small ethical charities in England, many of whom work on small projects in third world countries. These include the Besant Memorial Animal Dispensary the Alcott Memorial Higher Secondary School, the Free Dispensary at Alcott, the Woman's Aid and Seeing Eyes for Everyone, all located in Ajar, Chennai, India. Since 2000, TOS England's hand-on project has been Teddies for Tragedies, a concept that encourages people to knit small teddies, like these, to give to children in third world countries who are recovering from treatment in hospitals. It has been found that their recovery is smoother and quicker with a little friend to hold on to. Teddies have also been given to underprivileged children and those who have been involved in traumas of war, strife, or natural disaster. To date, over 27,000 teddies have been knitted and donated. Some teddies find their way to other charities. International Aid Trust that transports teddies and other knitted objects to third world countries and Furniture for Education Worldwide. FEW auctions off special knitted teddies with costumes at its annual dinner. The proceeds go to purchase surplus food equipment, furniture, which they will then ship to some of the most desperate children in the world. This association with these other by individual TOS members can do when grouped together and then paired with the work of other organizations. England is also quite proud of swimming in marathon triathlons and other events. The TOS in Finland encourages its TS lodges to participate in TOS activities. TOS director Nona Nina Maki also tries to promote TS visibility in the media so that the organization gets more followers. TOS Finland regularly donates to the Social Welfare Center at Adyar. Their donations are used to buy new outfits for the little children there, and rice, lentils, and oil for their teachers. This year, riding toys complete with flashing lights, bells, and music 
were also purchased, bringing much joy to the little ones. In January of 2019, Nona Nina and Pavi Cairo traveled to Ajar, visiting the Alcott School and bringing 1,500 picture cards to them. The themes of the cards were fairy tale-like, and some were from the book, The Foamy Sea, written by Nona Nina, and is, truly, is illustrated with her paintings. And this is the little book. And Nona Nina's paintings, by the way, have been displayed at the United Nations in New York. The book was published by the TOS in Finland. It has now been translated into English. All profits from the book go, go in their entirety to the welfare of children in India. The Theosophical Order of Service in India was formally established in 1976 and registered as a charitable society with its own constitution in 1977-78. It is currently present in 22 regions in India. Most of the regions organized annual general meetings as well as zonal conferences again this year. TOS, International, TOS National Secretary K. Shiva Prasad traveled widely, visiting and speaking at many events, as did TOS India National Director Barendra Bhattacharya. The travels of the International Secretary, Nancy Seacrest, concentrated on India this year as well. India has 1,370,899,651 in population. This was as of October 31st, 2019. One-fourth of which are living below the poverty line. And I took this directly from Barenda Bhattacharya's report. Many of those are women and girls. News of kidnapping innocent girls, violence towards women, and the exploitation of child labor caused the TOS India, yes, caused the TOS India to declare women's empowerment as its national project at its annual meeting in December of 2018. In addition, all TOS regions in India have been requested to work for the education of poor students to prevent dropouts from schools and to open primary schools in remote villages and slum areas. Dr. Deepa Padi, Vice President of the TS, has been doing excellent work in both of these areas for a number of years now. Most recently, by encouraging the empowerment of women with a mobile vocational training center that moves from slum to slum, teaching poor women the arts and skills of sewing and tailoring. Donations of sewing machines were made by the TOS New Zealand to this project. Other areas in India have similar training centers. The education of young women is also a primary concern. To this end, scholarships are being given to 25 young women in the Odisha region. The scholarship amount of 5,000 rupees is being matched by the TOS Italy for the next five years to give a total scholarship of 10,000 rupees to each one. These are wonderful examples of TOS countries working together 
to alleviate hardship and to empower women wherever they are. The West Bengal region is running 10 primary schools, two orphanages, and six tailoring training centers to improve the earnings of poor women. A hostel and a school for blind students is being run in Bihar. A new TOS group with an English medium primary school has been formed in Kerala, and the TOS Maharashtra region is running an English medium primary school at Akola. The TOS Italy continues its outstanding work with Syrian refugees. Last Christmas, OTS, which is TOS in Italian, contributed for the acquisition of kerosene in the Bab al Salam refugee camp due to the cold weather. We could have used some of that this week. <laughs> The Turkish authorities have now banned people from entering the camp. Many who fled from the camp can now be found by providing them with stoves. Italian members paid personal visits to some of these families, bringing with them fruits and vegetables. School materials were also donated to the small infant school and contributions made to the teachers' salaries. A community wood-burning stove was also donated and placed in a private garden that is available to the refugee community. The OTS Italy also continues its support of the pediatric clinic in the Bab Asalam camp, receiving monthly reports from the doctor, Ali Nasser. Unfortunately, poor his reports, conditions in the camp are getting worse rapidly because of the lack of food and hygiene, spawning intestinal parasites, scabies, and lice. Since 2016, the OTS Italy has also been supporting a small group of Roma Sinti people and their children in particular. In addition, food and other supplies were sent to TOS Kerala for the flood emergency. As per HPB's guidance from Key to Theosophy, OTS Italy's effort efforts go into concrete action to put into practice the theosophical spirit. The main focus of the TOS in Pakistan is education. To that end, they run five educational programs plus various workshops, trainings, and seminars on various topics. The Jamshed Memorial School provides quality education at an affordable cost. Over time, the school has expanded from Montessori to primary level with over 500 children. The education philosophy of the school is in line with the ideals of theosophy as practiced by other similar schools around the world. The children a minute. The curriculum and the method of educational encourages the children to become self-reliant, compassionate, and creative members of society. The Minwala Montessori Institute was inaugurated in 2015 for conducting a one-year Montessori teacher training course. 75 girls have completed the diploma course. Practical experience is provided in-house at the Jamshed Memorial School. After graduation, some of the passing students are employed in the school and others have obtained employment elsewhere. The education sponsorship program was started four decades ago and has helped thousands of underprivileged college and school-going students with financial aid 
to pursue their education, thus improving the quality of their and their families' lives. The program is supported mainly by sponsors from Australia, New Zealand, and some local sponsors. One encouraging success story is Rimshaw Rizwan, who has been receiving a scholarship since 2011 when she was in class five. Rizwan is determined to become a doctor. She's about to take, I probably has by now, her second year pre-med exams and is confident to pass with high grades. There are presently 14 home liter literacy centers known as Quandiel Home Schools functioning in one of the main marginalized areas of Karachi. Approximately 25 boys and girls can be taught in each home school. The purpose is to motivate and encourage parents who are not aware of the advantages of education and normally not willing to send their children, especially girls, due to cultural norms or economic problems. Here, the teachers nurture the children in a homey environment and prepares them with a basic level of literacy for further education. Quandale Home Schools are supported by TOS sponsors from Australia, New Zealand, and Italy, and other sponsors from South Africa, the USA, and Pakistan. A few years ago, the TOS Pakistan, in collaboration with the United Nations Women's Guild, provided scholarships to 15 young women to study nursing at the Holy Family Hospital Nursing School in Karachi. These students completed the three-year course. Then the funding ended. However, funds were received from the TOS USA for five more students presently Support continues to be received from other donors. The TOS Pakistan would like to continue this program and efforts are being made to raise more funds for it. The work of the TOS around the world testifies to Annie Besant's foresight in creating the Theosophical Order of Service as its members are truly putting the first object of the Theosophical Society into action. And it follows HPB's teachings in the key to Theosophy, that Theosophists should live a life of active altruism. Thank you.